Today on Straight Talk Africa, the Democratic Republic of the Congo presidential election results dispute. That discussion is coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America headquarters here in Washington. I am Sheka Sali, and today is the topic, the disputed presidential election results in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The presidential election in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is over, but the fallout from this contentious poll is building up. Several African bodies are calling for a recount. And the candidate who says he, has, he was cheated out of victory is challenging the official election results in court. My colleague, Anita Powell, reports from Pretoria. The man who believes he was cheated of the Democratic Republic of Congo's presidency is appealing to a higher power. Opposition coalition leader Martin Fayulu, who was favored by polls to win the December 30th vote, filed to the Constitutional Court Saturday for a recount. We have faith, and our faith is intact, undaunted, because the people have decided, and the will of the people will be realized. I'm a man of faith. Congo's election body declared opposition leader Felix Shisekedi provisional winner last week, sparking surprise and outrage after a chaotic and widely criticized poll. The Southern African Development Community, SADC, called for a recount of the vote and a government of national unity. Their call was supported late Sunday by another African bloc, the International Conference of the Great Lakes Region. So it is a departure from how they've handled other electoral crises in member states. It's also certainly a departure from some of the weaker statements that SADC has made on the DRC. It's really taken a very um, hands-off approach to this electoral crisis over the last three years. So it's a surprise. In terms of how effective it can be, I think we, we have some doubts. The body in charge of declaring a recount, the Constitutional Court, is loyal to longtime President Joseph Kabila. Although Kabila is stepping down, analysts think he aims to play a dominant role behind the scenes when or if Chisiketi takes office. The Electoral Commission announced the ruling Common Front for Congo, FCC party, led the parliamentary vote. That means the president-elect, who heads the Union for Democracy and Social Progress, UDPS party, may have some political struggles ahead. If there is marriage between the FCC and UDPS, not to last for very long, uh, it will be a very, it's a, it's a marriage by, by uh, it's not a marriage by conviction. Uh, and that's a problem. And they will have uh, serious, serious tension. Fayulu says he won't back down, but the Electoral Commission chief says Congo should prepare for Chisiketi's inauguration. The speech by the President of the Republic all else being equal, will happen on the 22nd of January. Before that can happen, the court needs to decide, recount the vote or risk legitimacy by letting the results stand. Anita Powell, VOA News, Pretoria. Joining us today in the studio, I expect there to be two distinguished guests. One of them is right here, the Reverend Olivier Chekina, senior advisor and strategist to Felix Chisekedi the DRC president-elect, and Father Jean-Claude Atusameso, president of the Jatuki Providence Foundation, who is expected to be representing the DRC Catholic bishop's position on the presidential election results, has not yet arrived, is caught up somewhere in traffic. And last but not least, Mulegwa Zihindura, Assistant National Security Advisor for External Affairs of the DRC will be joining us via telephone link up from the capital, Kinshasa. Well, I have to say, Olivier, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa for the first time. Well, Brother Shaka, I'm very happy to be here as well. I'm honored to be on your show today. Very interesting. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. How do you uh, feel like, uh, especially given that uh, finally, finally, the election is over? I feel very good. Uh, Congolese people have uh, demonstrated their determination to choose their own leaders, and they did uh, elect the new president. 
Ms. Felix Chisakedi. Any particular concern, uh, given that uh, that particular victory is in fact being disputed by the run-up? Well, I would not take that as uh, the end of the world. It is not the first time elections have been disputed in the world. In fact, we had uh, one just uh, recently in uh, Madagascar. And uh, around the world, uh, elections have been disputed. And even here on the grounds where you and I are sitting in the mm. United States, mm. Uh, elections have been disputed, so I have no concern whatsoever, whatsoever on that. But aren't you really, uh, or shouldn't you in fact be concerned, especially given the history of elections in your country? Because frankly, the last time I checked, uh, it looks like the only election that probably was accepted by most people across the board was the one of the 1960, which eventually elected the first indigenous prime minister by the name, of course you know, the great, Patrici yes. Emere Lumumba, yes. who of course subsequently was assassinated. Yes. And you concerned about the fact that uh, almost every other election in recent years, for example, 2011, it was disputed by none other than Etienne Chisekedi who happens to be father of the young man, Felix Sekedi, who happens now to be president-elect. Yes. Well, uh, I am concerned uh, by the fact that this, these issues are being uh, made too big than they are. I do agree with you that in the past we had uh, these elections that have been disputed, but this time around is very different because this is the very first uh, alternative. This the, the, the very first time an opposition leader is winning an election and uh, an incumbent president is actually leaving uh, power. Uh, this is a big deal. So I think the world should be rejoicing at this time instead of uh, making this uh, huge deal as uh, we see in the media. But you also know, of course, that uh, uh, even the one of 2006 was also disputed by a one Jean-Pierre Bemba. Yes, it was disputed uh, by Jean-Pierre Bemba that I happen to know uh, well. Um, like I said, those elections in the past, 2006 and 2011, uh, I did dispute them myself. Uh, but this one mm. is very different. President Kabila is stepping out of power. We have a historic uh, political party, the largest political party in Congo, having their president uh, becoming the... Uh, the next president of mm -hmm. DRC. To me, it is a big deal. I would not compare these elections with uh, the two, uh, two ones in 2006 and 2011. And keep in mind that we are a young democracy. We would not uh, think that we want to be perfect when great democracies like the United States uh, still have election issues. So the world should not expect perfection from us. Well, time, of course, uh, happens not to be our best ally, so we will go for uh, a short... Well, you know, there's no... De talking about democracy, there's no democracy in Studio 47 right here because uh, when the producer tells you to go on or to do this or that, you have to go, like Absolutely. a loyal soldier. You just salute. Let me take you back to the issue of... Uh, democracy. You really think that uh, you are a young democracy? Because there are a lot of people who say the only relationship that uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo has with democracy or the concept of democracy is the name. The fact that it is called the Democratic Republic of the Congo. That other than that, there are no really other reflections of democracy in your country. Well, I do understand uh, that 
part. And like I said, we are not perfect and we don't pretend to be. But at least, uh, like you said yourself, since, to, uh, since 1996, uh, no, 1960, 1960. when uh, the great uh, Lumumba was elected as, as Lumumba. prime minister, we didn't have any kind of election. I mean, when I'm talking about election, I'm talking about two people going mm. and uh, being voted by the people. We didn't have that. You know the kind of elections we had under Mobutu. For 32 years. For 32 years. And after that, we had uh, President Laurent Desiree Kabila, the father of President Joseph Kabila, coming into power by force. And you know how he went out. And then President Kabila took over to go through the transition. So the first election ever mm -hmm. Congo had was in 2006. I mean, when you had two contenders uh, contending to be elected. So to me, it is a beginning of democracy though we might not have it all but at least uh, we have left we have not arrived yet but i think we have left someone might actually say that uh, olivier you do have a very good reason why you would react like that especially because uh, it is your candidate that was declared the winner well uh, i will tell you right now that if it was Mr. Fayulu, another uh, opposition leader, if he was de declared a winner, I would have accepted uh, that because in my view, uh, it was very well balanced. I, I am surprised that some people are surprised to see Felix Chisekedi winning. To me, uh, an opposition leader was going to win anyways, mm. either Fayulu or Chisakedi. So I can, I can I'll present to you some facts to show you that it is surprising to be people surprised to see Felix Chisakedi winning. Why would you say that uh, it really had to be an opposition candidate winning? Uh, would that uh, suggest that uh, President Joseph Kabila has in fact been politically occupying space for the last 18 years? Well, I, you, you, we know how these things uh, happen in Africa, and incumbent presidents, uh, they, they have worked for many years, for some of them, and uh, when you get used to power, it becomes difficult. And also, uh, Opposition leaders don't make it easy when they use some kind of languages like threatening the inco incoming president. So if you would tell me that uh, when I leave power, you will come after me, I might think twice before I leave. So uh, this also can explain why uh, presidents tend to stay longer in in power. And I, I was uh, watching uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, Belgium saying the same thing uh, the other day, that if we want a, a, a true change of power in Africa, we need to send a strong message to uh, tell president, incoming president, that they will be safe after the presidency. So uh, I think uh, I'm not trying to justify the fact that the president stay longer or uh, trying to say that they occupy political space. But I think uh, some, some of these reasons, we need to address them and uh, get to change things. I think that uh, there is incontrovertible evidence uh, suggesting that uh, a lot of African countries really are on track. I was last, for example, uh, in July uh, in uh, the Republic of Malawi. Uh, where I sat down uh, in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interview with uh, a former Malawian president, Bakiri Mulusi, mm. who has actually been uh, out of state house for more than 10 years, and he says there is life after state house. Yes. He says there is no problem, and in fact, he was having a ball. He was enjoying himself, mm -hmm. being free to live in his country, and in a sense, his people thanking him for his services. So why couldn't, why, why do we really have to worry about 
having transitions, smooth transitions. It has happened in Ghana. Mm -hmm. It has happened in Benin, where you had, uh, at one time, uh, a dictator, Matthew Kareku. Mm -hmm. He was, in fact, defeated as an incumbent by Sogolo. Yes. Sogolo came in power, spent only one term, only to be defeated by Matthew Kareku. Mm -hmm. And then Kareku served his constitutional uh, term limits and went on, and Benin still continues. And there are so many, several other countries that we can talk about. Yes, and so Congo is uh, adding itself on that list. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time ever, having President Kabila stepping aside yeah. and having a new president, it is encouraging to add a president that it is possible to have life after the presidency. Any particular reason why, for example, Kabila's uh, coalition of parties would lose the presidency, but in fact, win the legislative assembly in a huge landslide? Well, I, that's the reason why we are disputing uh, that part of election. Mm -hmm. We think uh, we are claiming at least 70 seats, uh, 70 seats in the assembly. You have about parliament. 30 seats, correct? Uh, no, no, we have uh, 14. Uh, we all together with uh, the other party that is uh, in a coalition with us, yes, we have yes. uh, 49. 49. Yeah. How did you do in uh, the province of Kasai, where the big man comes from? Uh, we, we won big. We you won, won big. huge, yes. You won big. We did. And yeah. so we did in other regions as well. Mm. Uh, like uh, in uh, Katanga and Kinshasa and other places, we have won. As you know, UDPS, uh, the party that is led by Felix Chisekedi, is implemented everywhere mm. uh, in Congo. Yes. That even the reason why I am surprised again to see people surprised that Felix Chisekedi won this election because he had the real voters. So I, 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 I don't know why some medias, I don't know about yours, uh, they seem to be surprised. When you have a guy who is leading the largest party in the country, implemented everywhere, having true voters, uh, why would he not win? In fact, some people are saying that uh, it is not uh, an election, but rather, in their words, not mine, a selection. But this is not about uh, an election whose results at the end of the day reflect the will of the people, but rather an election that is organized in such a way that at the end of the day, the results reflect the will of the individual who announces the results. Well, there's no reason whatsoever for, for people to think that way, and there's no evidence for that. Uh, like I said, Felix Chisekedi, uh, all the facts, I mean, all the facts show that he could have won this election. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I also think Mr. Fayulu could have won this election. It could have gone either way. Let me give you, would, would you allow me to give you a few facts? Sure. That, uh, that makes me surprised that people are surprised. The first one is the one I told you, Felix Chisekedi is leading the largest political organization implemented everywhere in Congo with true voters. Not just curious people that are coming to see you in the meeting, but actual people committed and engaged, ready for anything, right? And how effective, in fact, are those structures if they are in place, as you say? How effective are they, uh, the, 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 uh, the structures the, of the party? They are very, very effective, and we see that on the ground. When, like, we call for a demonstration, when we, we, we call for people to, uh, to stay home, we see that. On the other hand, we see Mr. Fayulu, uh, just, a, just a few days before the election, he wasn't even, he wasn't able to uh, have his people stay home. Mm. He said people should stay home, don't go to work. Everybody went out, everybody went to work, everybody went to school. So if, if these people are ready to vote for you, they should be ready to follow you. 
they should be uh, ready to obey what you say. But when Mr. Chisekedi says people should stay home, we see that observed in the whole country. And uh, just uh, before the election, the, uh, Mr. Fayul was campaigning against uh, the voting machine. And they had the demonstration against the voting machine. Mm. They called for people to go demonstrate. We had like probably a few hundreds of people on the streets. And that made them so frustrated against Felix, who happened to say, I will go to the election with or without the machine. Why were they frustrated? Just because if Felix is not with them, Nobody's coming out. They knows uh, they, they actually know the power of UDPS. They know the power of his party. That's why they were count, counting on the party mm. to help them uh, send people out and boycott the election. Since we said no, and they, they, they started coming after Felix. So there is no reason for people to be surprised that this man uh, won the election. It could have been possible for him or for Euro to win the election. Olivier, unfortunately, once again, uh, time is not our best ally. Before we pause for a short break, we would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now streaming live on Facebook. To watch our show, just enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa and don't forget to share it with your friends. We are on Twitter, follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka. And join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA DRC and we'll air some of your comments later in the show. We'll be right back with you, so please don't go away. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. Could be French, English, Portuguese, Bantu, Arabic. It is the beat. The African beat that counts. The beat does all the translations. It cuts across all languages and gives us the understanding that this is the African beat. It is so distinct. And adhesive. It binds us together. African beat on the voice of America. For more information, visit our website at www.voanews.com slash African beat. Today's youth are not just the next generation of African leaders, they are today's leaders. And this is the time to invest in them, today, not tomorrow. So let's connect, let's engage with each other on issues that will transform our societies. Innovation, leadership, entrepreneurship, things that you're doing to move the continent forward, to make you the greatest generation that Africa has known. It's up front every Wednesday, 17.30 UTC, right here on The Voice of America. Well, I have to say that uh, we are very, very delighted uh, to be joined by uh, Father Jean-Claude uh, Atu Sameso, president of the Jatuki Providence Foundation. He represents the DRC Catholic Bishop's position on the presidential election results. I have to say that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to be able to host you at least for the first time on Straight Talk Africa. Well, thank you so much and uh, I would like to correct something. I uh, am a Catholic priest from uh, from Congo and mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. of uh, the Bishop's Conference, like as a priest of Congo. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, here I'm uh, not coming as a representative, but I'm talking on, uh, I'm talking as a Catholic priest. Mm 
No, just representing uh, the, position the, the position of, of your of colleagues. Of the Church of Congo. In the Church of Congo, yeah, the yeah. Catholic. But I, I would like to make sure that I'm not having mandate to do it, but I'm doing it because I belong to the Church of Congo. Do you believe in the position that uh, the Catholic bishops in Congo have taken regarding uh, the recent elections? Uh, yes, I believe in it. And uh, that's the mission uh, the Congo uh, Church has been playing all the time as uh, the church in the village. And the church in the village is doing the best to lead the people so that all the parties can be happy with uh, the expectations of what they are getting after these elections. From the information that uh, you have uh, accessed, do you think there is enough evidence in fact, incontrovertible evidence that supports the position of the Catholic bishops in Kinshasa about this election? Uh, the Catholic bishops uh, was uh, very clear to uh, uh, Father Ncholi, uh, who is uh, the Secretary General of uh, the Catholic bishops. He said uh, their, mission, their mission was to be observers, to, be, uh, to witness the process of the elections. And they did their best to have a representative in each uh, uh, station where they had elections. Now, according to all the document, all the evidence they have, that's what made them claim what they are claiming. And uh, I remember Father uh, Jolie saying that he received even Mr. Uh, Vital Kamere. Uh, with the summer uh, uh, members of uh, UDPS. They came also with the evidence of showing what they're claiming as uh, having uh, Felix Tisekedi, the winner of the elections. And it was, it, was, it, was, it was seen after the meeting that each party came with evidence of what they got on the ground, the ground and their evidence was similar. But for the Catholic Church, they had more numbers of uh, witnesses on the ground that's why they were able to claim what they are claiming. And it's according to the evidence they're getting from the ground. Olivier, you are a reverend. You are a man of God. Yes. To what extent, for example, do you respect the Catholic bishops on the ground in Kinshasa? Well, I, I have a great deal of respect for uh, the Catholic bishops. Uh, of course, I do respect them. I, I, there is no extent. Uh, I have no issue with uh, the Catholic bishops and uh, Cardinal Mosengo, who is a great man, mm. uh, and uh, uh, the Bishop uh, Ambongo and others. They have, they have done a great job uh, to secure the San Silvester Agreement in 2000 and, uh, 2006. So I do respect them, of course. So what about, uh, uh, given that uh, you respect them, what about the position that they have taken regarding this uh, just ended election? I do respect them and I do respect their position, but I do not agree with the position. I can I respect your position, yeah. but I don't agree with that position because there, there's no facts to back that position. I, there is, I can raise doubt on the methodologies they have used to come, out, uh, to come up with those uh, results. And also, I should mention that it is not the Catholic bishop's uh, role or job to uh, announce the results of an election, it belongs to the Electoral College uh, to announce the final and official results. Their crime is not uh, announcing the results. Their crime is coming up with data, with information mm. that they say contradicts the announced result. Yeah, I do understand. And uh, we do have also the data uh, that show that uh, Felix Chisakedi has won the election. 
so I don't know. I, 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 I can't fight with the Catholic bishops. I can only show them that uh, there is a doubt in my mind. Are you Catholic? Uh, I used to be Catholic. <laughs> used I, to I be. grew up a Catholic, yeah. I see. Very interesting. Uh, I gather that uh, we have restored line with um, the capital of Kinshasa. Uh, good evening, uh, Mulegwa Zihindura. Good evening, Brother Shaka. Good to hear your voice, sir. How are you? I am doing terrific, like you always say. We have beautiful weather in Kinshasa. It's raining, and you know rain is a source of, of blessings or benedictions, if you want. I like that. Uh, let me introduce you, first of all. Uh, uh, Mulegwa Zihindura is the Assistant uh, National Security Advisor responsible for external uh, security. And he joins us live from the capital, Kinshasa. Well, I have to say, Mlegwa, that uh, once again, I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled to have the opportunity to host you on this edition of Straight Talk Africa. The feelings are mutual, Brother Shak. I like that. Now, talk to us, uh, Mulegwa, what is the situation like uh, from your vantage point? Uh, are people happy celebrating about uh, the just-ended elections? Well, I think the, the people of Congo know that we have made history. Uh, Congo, the President Joseph Kabila today uh, is a great leader in Africa. He has done something that nobody has done in Central Africa, which is to give up power uh, to the opposition. And this is fantastic. Uh, it's fantastic news. Uh, we are now, again, I repeat, uh, the most democratic country uh, in Central Africa and part of East Africa. So I am profoundly proud, and as many Congolese people are very proud, and you could hear the noise on, on December 31st when people were very celebrating to see that uh, the inclusive political system that was started by Kabila is now uh, the baton is being handed to somebody of the opposition. So there is euphoria in this town. Everybody is very happy. Not many people perhaps will disagree with you, uh, Mlegwa, uh, especially given the politics of uh, the Great Lakes region. There is no question that uh, when you look around the neighborhood, uh, you will find that uh, there are some individuals who have been presidents for more than 30 years. Uh, south, uh -huh. of course, of you, Angola, uh, you had a president who was also in power for more than 30 years. Uh, neighboring Rwanda, you have a president who was in power for not only a long time, but in fact intended to stay on for a very, very long time. Uh, but what people are having problems with, uh, Mulegwa, is that uh, they probably have problems with the manner in which the president is stepping down. They think that he has provided, some of these people say that they have, he has provide, presided over an election uh, which uh, is won by someone, uh, is, they say, is not the genuine winner of the presidency. How do you react to that? No, I think uh, people, well, we, we, President Kabila started this inclusive political system. The elections on, on December 30th were free and fair. Uh, if you read reports from uh, uh, the, for the uh, organization of Francophonie in many countries that were observers, these were fantastic elections. People expected us to have bloodshed. People expected us to actually cheat, and this did not happen. The machine that people were criticizing that they would cheat actually produced uh, somebody who is not of our political obedience. So, you know, there is absolutely no question in my mind that these elections were free and fair. These were fantastic elections. They went well, and they produced uh, a winner who is not of our political family. What about uh, other sources which are saying no, Mulegwa, uh, especially, in fact, uh, the Catholic bishops, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, who are actually saying that uh, this election, especially the president, uh, the presidential one, uh, was the result and the reflection of, in their words, not mine, of what they call massive rigging, creative accounting, some others would say. Well, the, 
the Catholic Church is, is an NGO like any NGO, and they had a role as an observer. Uh, they do not have, uh, they did not have the role to call out the election and say such and such a person won. Basically what the Catholic Church is doing now, you know, I think what the, 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 the priest should be doing now, many of these bishops who came up with these figures, you know, maybe they should just uh, take off uh, their, uh, their robes and, and go on the streets of politicians. You know, they obviously had somebody that they favored and they wanted that person to win. And when this person did not win, uh, they began to say that there was problems. So the Catholic Church is not the Electoral Commission. They do not have access to all the information that the Electoral Commission has. You know, so, you know, it's, 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 it's very sad that the Catholic Church has decided to try to, uh, to put fire, to put fuel on the fire in this country. It's not going to happen. Uh, God is actually on the side, not necessarily of the Catholic Church, but on the side of the Congolese people. And the Congolese people have won a victory. It doesn't matter what the Catholic Church says because they do not have the data uh, that has uh, the, uh, uh, the Electoral Commission. You know, the church has no business calling the election and say such and such a person won. It's not possible. We know who won the election. It's Felix Chisekedi. We are all looking forward to handing power to him uh, sometimes next week. I believe it's Tuesday next week. We will hand power to him. Uh, you know, we are waiting for, for actually waiting for, uh, uh, for the constitutional court to make a decision. And once that decision is done, we will hand over power to Felix Chisekedi, and life will continue for the rest of us. Talking about uh, life continuing, uh, what about uh, uh, your opinion about uh, the Catholic Church as an institution? It is said uh, by a lot of sources that uh, it is probably uh, one of the few, if not the only one probably in the entire country that commands great respect. What about you? Do you respect the Catholic Church as an institution in Absolutely. the DRC? Absolutely. I respect the, the church as an institution. Uh, I am myself uh, a member of the clergy, not in the Catholic Church. And so I Hello? have a lot of respect for the church. But the, the church's business is to take care of the population. But the church's business is not to go into political arenas and begin to make decisions who is going to rule the country. We are aware that the Catholic Church is uh, the biggest church in the country, uh, but that stops there. So what they should be doing is, is to be preaching people things about salvation, to bring people to Christ and to reconcile people, not to try to create division. It's not the whole Catholic Church. It's just a, a group of priests uh, that is bound on having a particular person win the elections uh, that is doing this. But the church as a whole, I'm a very big fan of uh, John Paul II. So the Catholic Church is something uh, that I respect quite a bit. Now, someone has uh, uh, suggested that uh, when you think about... Uh uh, the DRC, and you think about uh, the influence of the Catholic Church, that you are looking at Congo in the context, say, of Latin America, like one would look at Brazil. Brazil, for example, is considered to be a Catholic country where the church is, Catholic Church is revered and what have you, and that so does the Congo. Is that true? Well, no, it's, it's absolutely not, not, not true. That, that comparison is not correct. Uh, there's a lot of churches. Congo is mostly a Christian country, and there's a lot of churches who are pretty dominant here. The Protestant church, the Pentecostal church, is pretty strong in this country. So is the Catholic church. You know, uh, you know, we are, uh, uh, you know, we are not, I mean, not every Congolese person is Catholic here. You know, and the Catholic church has some say in influencing people. Uh, but uh, the Catholic Church does not govern the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is very interesting that you say that. Uh, I also am reminded of the fact that uh, you, Mulegwa Zindura yourself, you actually happen to be a priest. You have a church in Kinshasa. I saw the church the last time I was downtown Kinshasa. So I happen also Correct. perhaps to be uh, a host, really, a television host who is very, very lucky in the sense that I have had the opportunity of hosting three individuals who are very senior members in the Christian church. Correct. And if yes, that I is true, and if that is true, I would, I would like to think that you are 
people who are servants of God, and that in this particular mm -hmm. edition, we are going to be talking about nothing but the truth. Do you agree? Amen. Yes, I do agree. I'm an ordained apostle, and I preach the gospel. It's, it's, uh, my calling in life is, 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 is to preach the gospel. And the Bible says we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. And the truth of the matter in Congo right now is that Felix Chisekedi won the election. The truth of the matter in Congo right now is that President Kabila is now the best leader in Central Africa. He's the only person in the history of Central Africa to give up power to the opposition. So these are the truth, and nobody is going to take this truth away from the Congolese people. Mulegwa, if you were to talk to us from the deepest, better part of the bottom of your Bukavu heart and soul, would you say, for example, that the bishops, the Catholic bishops, are telling lies when they say that the information they have the data they have reflects an entirely different result from that announced by the Congolese Electoral Commission. What I can say from the bottom of my heart, Brother Shaka, is that the Catholic Church had the preference of a particular person. They wanted that person to become president of the Democratic Republic of Congo. But the Congolese population decided otherwise. The Congolese population chose uh, Felix Chisekedi to run this country to be a successor to, to Joseph Kabila. But the Catholic Church obviously had a preference. They had somebody uh, who they preferred to become uh, to become the, the president of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Unfortunately, uh, God had another plan, and the plan is Felix Chisekedi. Muregwa Zihindula, could you please name names? Who, who is that particular candidate that was the favorite of the Catholic Church? Could you please name his name? Well, yes, I can. You know, they, he, they, their candidate was uh, Martin Fayulu. They wanted Martin Fayulu to win for reasons that are obvious to them. Uh, and also uh, because uh, some of our old colonial master uh, who still has ideas of running this country. Uh, I'm talking about Belgium because they were funding most of the campaign being done by the Catholic Church. And the, the Belgians actually had preference, like the Catholic Church, for Martin Fayulu. And that's why you are hearing all these rumors and so on and so forth. The Belgians have even gone to the extent of to call the African Union in Addis Abeba asking them on behalf of the Catholic Church to support Martin Fayulu. What about uh, a British newspaper by the name Financial Times? Have you read their article about their assessment of the results in the DRC? Unfortunately, I have not uh, read their assessment, uh, but I have given you the, 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 the right picture of what happened in the elections. Now, if you have other people from uh, overseas who have other ideas, you know, who probably had plans, uh, uh, other plans for Congo, I know many of the mining companies, in, for instance, are not very happy because they wanted Marte Fayulu so they can re get rid of the mining code in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This did not happen. And so they are funding a lot of people to, to, to say all kinds of things about this election. But the truth of the matter, Somebody won the election, which is Felix Chisekedi, and uh, we hope after the, the, the Constitutional Court uh, examine what happened, that Felix Chisekedi will be taking the reins of this country from us, and then he will rule this country for the next five years, and other people can come and vie for the presidency. How do you react to that, uh, Father Artur Sameso? Um, personally, I, I would like to say that... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, when you're speaking, you said about what the Catholic Church uh, uh, said, and after that you said what uh, the British said. And um, <clears throat> you are showing that it's not just about the Catholic Church, because other also uh, observers uh, could also say what the Catholic Church said. But what about, now, for uh, me, what about <clears throat> some who will say that some of those sources, like the Financial Times, mm -hmm. they probably may have gotten their information mm -hmm. from the... Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, for the, 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 um, the New York Times, I will let you know that the person who wrote the New York Times is not a person working for New York Times. It's someone from Kinshasa who called to buy a space on New York Times to, to bring that news. And I know very well what was the mind of that person who did it. Now, for me, as a, uh, uh, an expert in international development, an expert in politician, and being in the U.S. for more than 17 years, I will, see that, I will say that the problem of Congo is not the elections. The problem of Congo is not the Catholic bishops. The problem of the Congo is the people who make the system be the way it is, letting people act the way they are acting and expecting a different result. Here in the U.S., more than uh, two or three years, we have been seeing Felicia Sekedi came, Martin Fayulum came, and all of those people came many times to say that the structure we put in place for election will not help us to have a reliable result for election. No one could listen to them. And everyone expected to let the same structure. I know even that one of the, the people who work at, uh, works at the CENI was from uh, the UP, UDPS. They wanted to have this guy out because the system was not in place for them to trust the system. But no one was uh, uh, agree that they could change the system. Now, what we are having today is the result what we could expect, because we know what we set up as a machine, and we know what we saw during the election time, and we need just to expect the result we are having today. Now, if people are fighting, saying the Catholic Church, or, uh, that's not the point. The point is, the structure which was organized the election, everyone at the beginning said that it was not the right structure, and they're supposed to change it. They didn't change it. And the result we have now is the result we're going to get. Really? So would you agree with someone, therefore, who would say, when it comes to the manner in which the just-completed election was organized, is or was like a couple planning a marriage while concentrating on divorce? Uh, <laughs> to, to answer your question, I will, I, I will just tell you to see what happened during the elections. Now we have an elected president, but one part of the country didn't have, didn't have the election. And they're going to explain that we didn't, they didn't have election because of the Ebola. But they're one day they before that, to, they are supposed to be uh, yeah. voting in March. In March, but did you have that system set up already somewhere in the world? And or we'll, it's going to be the first time for you, as a, and to what extent will that vote in fact count? That's the question. You understand? We have been doing the same thing, the same way, and we're expecting a different result. You're it will not happen. It will never happen in the world. You are talking about uh, a gentleman called. Uh, Einstein. Einstein one time said, uh, if you do, uh, if basically you, you, you basically do different things, eh? mm -hmm. Eh? Mm -hmm. you do different things and what are you expecting the same results? Yeah. You must be insane. Yeah. In some way, in some way, in order for us to expect something, we need to start planning, organizing on the ground in order for us to have that. But we saw Felix Chisekid was here. I saw him at the State Department. He was here at the Congress. I know even that they even went to the UN to say that they, we need to structure in another way that commission, independent commission, in order for us to have a good result. They didn't do it. Then we have this result. Everyone needs now to understand that we, 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 we could expect just that result. We couldn't expect something different. So you don't really think that uh, the election was free, fair, and credible? I don't. I, it's not just about thinking. It's about seeing what we had on the ground. It's not about thinking. What, Olivier, how do you react to that? Well, uh, I think uh, when uh, Reverend Father is talking about uh, the electoral uh, commission uh, in the past when people came here and try to uh, have some help to change that nothing happened 
So uh, if we didn't intervene back then, if we knew, I was talking to somebody the other day who said the Electoral Commission is corrupt. I said, uh, you don't have to say that now. You would have said that then and intervene to try to make changes. Before if, the elections. If you didn't do that, uh, why are you now raising all these uh, doubts and all these things? I think it is simply a distraction. My question is... But he's telling you that, uh, just like uh, Professor Einstein once said, that organizing an election in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is like uh, repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again, but in fact expecting different results. I, I, I disagree, Brother Shaka, because everybody I spoke to, including those that are disputing, they all agree that this election was way better than the ones we had before. Because I, I was talking to someone the other day, and he was disputing the result. I said, listen, so do you want then the election, the results to be uh, nullified and canceled to start over? He said, no, 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 no. We don't start over because we believe this election was good enough. It was better than any other. So then accept the results. So who is benefiting from all these distractions that are, are going on? Uh, I, I believe there is some dark powers uh, behind the scenes that are trying to distract us. Uh, this is not the time for that. People expected a chaos in Congo, but people are it rejoicing. Has not it has not happened. People are rejoicing. People are happy. Probably few people everywhere there is disputes. Well, if here in the United States, people dispute election, it happened. Why are people and they go to court? They go to court. And in the Congo and the DRC, they have also gone to court. They have to go to court and accept because, like I said before, I made a mistake. The, the commission, uh, the ele electoral commission announced the results, provisional results. And then the court received the request for those who want to dispute and then announced the final results. And everybody should abide by that. But what about uh, some people who say, and in fact, there are not few, there are very many, who say that you cannot really trust the court, just like a lot of other institutions in the DRC, because the judiciary system in the DRC, in their words, not mine, is not independent. Is, it is subordinate to the executive, who happens to be President Joseph Kabila. Whoever is bringing that narrative right now has no solution what, whatsoever to give to us. We don't want to be distracted at this point. We want solutions. We don't want people to... So you, people are raising issues without proposing any solution. So then I told another person the other day who told me the same thing that you just said. I said, then you want to come to Congo and then uh, destroy all the institutions in the country and then uh, make Congo become a colony again and do whatever you want and then make an elect a perfect election you want to make and then have a president you want and start over. Are you what alluding, is the are solution? Are you alluding then? to the, Berigian, the, the, the Berigians? Yes. Who are the last colonial master? Well, they're trying to do the same thing again. And perhaps have the dubious privilege of or distinction of in fact having organized the only election back in 1960, that up to now could be the gold standard because it produced a winner, Patrice Emery Lumumba. Yeah. We have no issues with the nation's friends, including the Belgians. Uh, our hands, our arms are open to anyone, but we have no instructions and uh, I would say uh, injunctions to receive mm. from people to tell us what we have to do. Mm. Friends should advise us. Friends should uh, share with us their views and let us tell them what we think. So uh, I think what is going on right now is uh, simply a distraction. A new president is elected and a historic uh, political opposition party uh, has won the election. I mean, the president of that party has won the election. This is only logical. This is only normal. 
Mr. Fayulu, uh, until the end of October last year, he was unknown. And we saw right after they had their coalition in Geneva. He was unknown politically, politically. But, but he had been a member of parliament at one time, isn't it? Of course, like you said it, I didn't say it. And how many, uh, how many MP he had in his party? Probably three or four, if I, uh, I remember. Uh, I, I do respect Martin Fayulu uh, very well, but I think it is not surprising to have Felix Tshisekedi, who is a well-known leader, winning the election. I know the French medias and Belgian medias, they have come uh, to back him right after the coalition in Geneva. And big interest groups, they poured a lot of money to try to make him known. I do understand. But he, was, he went on the ground trying to fight against the election. He campaigned against the voting machine. His message was so confusing until the last minute, and only two days, a few days before the election, he said, oh, finally, people should go vote with the machine. How come you can win an election on that, 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 that big margin, 62, as they're claiming, when your message was confusing? You've been all over the place, and all the facts go against you, and all the facts go for the one who is the, the winner of the election, bigger party, well-known, clear message, he went everywhere, spoke to his people. So all the facts uh, go against Fayulu. That's why I say I am, people are mocking our intelligence. They are mocking our, our, our ability to think when they are showing us that they are surprised that Felix Chisekedi won the election. They are mocking our ability to think. Olegwa Zihindura. Yes, Brother Shaka. There are people who say that uh, most elections in Africa are not meant for the primary stakeholder who happens to be a citizen of that particular country, like in your case, but that these elections, in fact, are held for the development partners. How do you react to that? Well, I, I, I will say if that is the case in other countries, it's not the case in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In Africa also, nobody from the opposition ever wins the elections. But we are the first country again, and I am so proud to have been part of this process, to see this, that one day I'll be able to tell this story to my children, that we are the first African country to hand power over to the opposition. And I am so proud of that. I am so proud that uh, Joseph Kabila is a man of his own words. He said he will not stick around. He did not stick around. He said we are going to go to the elections we went to the elections. He said uh, that we will hand over power, and we are going to be handing over power next Tuesday. So I am so proud I, of this, Brother Shaka. I cannot tell I'll you correct you how proud say, I am I'll correct you in saying that you are not the, of the Congolese people. You are not the first country to hand over power to the opposition, because the last time I checked, Kenya did that in 2003. <laughs> and even Benin, yeah. under dictator Matthew Kareku, accomplished that in the 1990s? Well, well, I think that can be disputed in, in many ways. I think that can be disputed in many ways. Unfortunately, you know, the time happens not to at, be... At some of the countries, you said, I am not going to say anything bad about other countries. Time but happens I'm not to be our best ally. That history. On that note, we thank today's guests, the Reverend Olivier Chekina, Father Jean-Claude Atusameso, and Mulegwa Zihindula, who joined us on the phone from Kinshasa. Also, thanks to our audience for tuning into Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not bitter, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And please remember to keep the African hopes alive. <laughs>